What's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about Handcash teasing a USDC integration and an announcement coming up at the Dubai conference in next week from May 24th through the 26th, I believe. And it is the CoinGeek conference that's rebranded to the BSV blockchain convention. So I think that's something to look forward to. And this is going to be more of a speculative video because we don't know what they're actually going to do. But uh, I'm just going to take a guess here and, uh, you know, because I think this stuff is, is fun to talk about. Also, it, we can theorize some things that would actually help the network out that would eventually attract more liquidity and more usage for people because, I mean, that's the goal, right? So I think what's what they're teasing is a probably my thought. This is just my I don't know. Right. I, I have no idea. But. I'm thinking that they will have something where you can top up and instead of getting say five bucks of BSV, you'll get $5 of tokenized USDC on BSV. And I've always thought for a while that this is a great idea because USDC, I think is very good. The issue is that it runs on chains that don't work, right? Um, you know, I've never gonna, I'm still salty about having like $17 of USDC on, on MetaMask that I can't move because the gas fee I get quoted as like 20 bu bucks. So it's a sick, it's effectively zero, right? So, you know, I don't know what the supply of USDC is, but the true supply that's actually spendable is much lower because I mean, you can't, yeah, you just can't use it. It's unusable. So, and with the recent news of BlackRock and some of these other institutions, that you know, I'm sure people have an icky feeling about a different icky feeling than something like Tether. Um, it's more sound, right? You're not. I don't believe unless the whole crypto space collapses, I don't think you'll see a run on USDC. And the reason is because there are, you know, it's one thing to be whoever's backing Tether, right? I mean, that whole thing is very sketchy. People can look into that. Folks have been talking about that for five years now. Um, the folks that are backing USDC are U.S. regulated companies and they're going forward, right? And I know there's a lot of folks in this crypto space, BSV especially, that are adverse to Tether because they just don't want to touch it. Like, I mean, you know, anything can happen, right? I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, chances are 99% it's not going to happen while you're holding the bag. But... You know, I'm sure that's how people felt last week with the whole UST thing. So, you know, I think USDC is much more, um, it's less risk averse, different risk averse, but less risk averse. And yes, it's icky because you're dealing with these, you know, deep state, uh, you know, whatever label you want to put on it, institutions. You know, a lot of people hear BlackRock and they just think, uh, you know, it's sketchy. But not sketchy in the fact that they're poor or they might be insolvent. I don't think anyone's questioning if BlackRock's going under tomorrow, whereas people think the Tether thing is imminent, depending on who you talk to. So that, that's a reason for, that's one reason for USDC. Um, being able to tokenize it on BSV is great because it basically makes it work. So um, you could tokenize it in your hand cash wallet and then you could send, say, a dollar of uh, that's tokenized. I hope, I'm thinking it'll be on run, but who knows? Um, I know it won't be on Styles because Alex has said so publicly. Um, he really criticized that protocol publicly about it, but, um, then you'll be able to just send it to your, another hand cash user, a dollar. And, um, unfortunately because of the run stuff with hand cash, the token stuff is still gated. Um, I know that's being worked on. Uh, you're not going to be able to send USDC to our one address, which I think would be great because then other people could build with it. Now you can still build with it with hand cash, but it's kind of limiting, right? Um, I think. My, I think my biggest gripe with this, which I'm fairly confident that Handcash will not do, is have some type of liquidity pool for it. Um, I, this is going to be a slight tangent here, but very related. So this was, I believe, 2018 or 2017. I don't know if folks remember this, but Robinhood, when the interest rates were about 2% here in the U.S. and they were rising around the earth, Robinhood announced a checking account or a savings account and they were going to pay 3.5 percent so they were going to pay almost double than what the fed funds rate was and what the base savings rate was for like you know goldman sachs american express 
Wealthfront, all these other uh, fintech and financial institutions. And the media, the mainstream media, attack them. They, they sick the dogs on them, man. And Robin Hood just backed up. They backed up instantly. They crumpled to the ground and they never did anything with it. I remember when I saw that, I thought, I'm going to move almost all my savings into it. Um, the way the mainstream attacked them, the technical way they attacked them was say, oh, well, it's not FDIC insured. FDIC insured for folks who are not in the U.S., is where the government basically guarantees savings up to a certain amount. I believe it's 200K or something like that, 250K. So meaning that if you had your savings in a Goldman Sachs account and for some reason they went under, the government would basically print the money and give you your $250,000. Now, and that's the funny thing about FDIC is that it's not necessary because <laughs> if that actually happens, you're not gonna have $250,000. It's like, it's, like, it's like the government thinks that they can just fix money problems, which I guess, you know, that's been going on for a hundred years now. But anyways, slight tangent on that. But the point I'm trying to make is, um, actually there's a second point before I make the final one. Coinbase tried to do the same thing. This was two years ago, two or three years ago. I don't know if folks remember this. They said that they were going to pay yield, maybe 5% on staking your USDC in the Coinbase app. And then again, the, uh, the mainstream went after them saying that this is unregulated. You guys are scamming customers by actually paying them a yield on their dollars. You know, something that used to be normal in the US and they, they backed up too. They just backed up and crumpled and bent the knee, right? And I think th there's two reasons for this. Number one is, okay, yeah, you can, the mainstream, you can criticize these apps for not doing that. But I think the bigger reason is they don't want the common man by they, meaning the government, whatever, they don't want the common man earning an actual yield on their dollars. Also, that is huge competition, right? If if you're Robinhood or Coinbase and you're a new app, you know, relatively new in the last six, seven years, and you're coming up and saying, we're actually going to pay these, we're, we're going to do what we said we were going to do and be for the common man and pay them a yield on their dollars. Well, now you're flying in the face of all the banks. Chase, um, Goldman Sachs, American Express, you're basically stepping up and punching them in the face and they're not going to like that. And that's what happened. And that's the real reason I believe they did it because, I mean, think about it, right? Um, and this is going to tie into the Bitcoin SV and hand cash stuff in a second, but think about it, right? Especially in the Coinbase example. If I have, let's say I have 50K in a savings account and I'm only getting paid 1% because that's the Fed funds rate. But because these other people are using this technology, let's say Coinbase, and they're actually making money, they can pay a higher yield. You know, they can do more of the traditional banking, how it used to work before the fractional reserve stuff. So, you know, and run a more honest business, which they're not really doing. But anyway, that's, that's the point I want to make. So you can say, okay, I'm going to, if, if I can make 7% on the money that I lend out, I'll pay my customers or my stakers three or 4%, which is modest, but way higher than anything anyone has gotten for the last, I'd say since 2005, so 17 years, right? I, I think the rate back then was like five or 6%. So, I mean, that's a huge move, right? So why would anyone hold money in a traditional institutional savings account? They're gonna be, it, it gives an incentive to move into something more innovative like Coinbase or Robinhood. They don't care about the FDIC stuff because they're getting a higher yield. And Robinhood's actually making money they're both publicly traded. Of course, it's a little more risky, but you know that could be disruptive. So my, the point is, no one's been able to achieve this with USDC yet. I'm sure there's some DeFi staking stuff on other chains that do it. But again, your, your big hurdle there is you can't, number one, you can't actually appeal to the little man because the fees are too high. Number two, um, you limit who can participate because of the transaction fees. Same thing. It always gets them. But let's say you have BSV and USDC, right? Now you have something that's going to be very low fee, tiny. Fees are even going down further, by the way. Um, I've been able to, uh, I'm seeing 0 0.01 sats per byte. So that's 5x lower than when I did the video a couple weeks ago. So we've gone down even more since then. And so these fees are going to be minuscule. And USDC is going to actually work. So imagine if you could take your BSV and immediately flip it, you know, switch it to tokenized USDC and earn a yield. I know Handcash is not going to do this, but if some exchange could do it, I mean, that would be great. The issue, of course, is how do you pay out? I mean, how do you actually earn the money? 
None of, most BSV companies are not making any money. So someone would have to take a risk there. But, you know, everybody else is doing it with basically Ponzi scheming. So, um, you know, I'm not advocating for that, but I'm just I'm just making a comment there. So, um, yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I I'm hoping that people will be able to um, eventually send it out of the wallet because then people can build apps and accept it, right? Because um, I saw Alex make a point on Twitter that some businesses, yeah, I mean, I can tell you, man. I mean, it, if you're trying to actually say take a certain amount of BSV and sell it at some point, I mean, you can get hosed, especially with these high confirmation times on these exchanges. So, I mean, it sucks, man. I mean, imagine getting paid one day and then it goes down 20% the next day in between the time you're doing a deposit. I mean, that's, that can't be money. That doesn't work, you know? So, um, this, this in theory would solve this issue. So I, I think the second thing hand cash might do is off ramp, which would be great. So meaning now also you can buy, you can top up with hand cash. So buy $5 of BSV, get it instantly in your wallet. Now you can take your BSV or USDC and go the other way. So deposit into your bank account, which that would be awesome, right? Because now, now hand cash can be the in and out. So, um, you know, now you'd have ways for people to quickly make some dollars, you know, by playing haste or some of these other or Dural dogs or whatever and start earning, right? Earning in the micropayment economy. And if it's small amounts, I think you'll get, a, they'll be able to get away uh, with this fairly easily uh, versus having some top down regulation coming. So, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while that um, the scalable blockchain is going to suck in a lot of these assets. Um, USDC, again, I think is, is very good. I mean, that's what people think, right? People think that's going to happen anyway, basically by government. So it's just in this time, it's the free market doing it with their own collateral as assets instead of the government, you know, printing, right? Which I think is probably better. Um, but I, I really, the, my hesitation about this working is that uh, when Relay tried to do this a couple of years ago, the issue was the liquidity. Um, there was no incentive to actually hold the USDC. Now you could make the argument if Hencash has APIs for it, okay, now you can build with it and accept it. But I think the primary use case for that will be selling the dollars, uh, the tokenized dollars for dollars. Um, I think it's unclear how Hencash will manage the ETH, the tokenized part, because they're still going to have to pay a gas fee at some point, maybe like a recurrent batch job every month or something. So they mitigate that. You know, if they, if they can aggregate all the transactions and just do one, or something like that at the end of the week you know you can pay a gas a twenty dollar gas fee once i mean you know write it off it's not it's not it's not ideal but it's not the end of the world either right so i'm really looking forward to the announcement i think it's great um i think hand cash is the best wallet from a ux perspective i think they will continue to innovate and try different things um but i, I think here if we could have some type of liquidity pool with USDC and somehow get paid a yield, um, that would be it because then you would incentivize people to convert their BSV into the tokenized USDC and actually get some supply on the chain and moving around or state for people to buy and sell into. Because um, again, the, the issue here is the, is Ethereum. If, if you could just do swaps into a pool of BSV to USDC, I mean, that uh, the fees would be so, it'd be killer, man. I mean, that would be a true use case that's unique to BSV, right? Um, I know you have Tether on these other chains and stuff, and you have Tron tokenized Tether and stuff, but the fee, even though it's lower, is, you know, again, Tether has issues. People, people, some folks don't want it, you know, and that's unnecessary risk, right? Um, and you, people can go look at the public opinion. There's a different, and again, it is a different beast, but it's a different risk. Meaning, if I hold USDC, I'm not, pro I'm probably not thinking it's going to collapse. I mean, we saw someone con convert a um, huge amount of USDC for Tether when the uh, when the whole crash was happening last week. So, uh, sorry, yeah, Tether for USDC. So. It's the market has spoken on this. They, they have their sentiment on it and Hancash is leaning into it and they already have the relationship with Circle based off the credit card integration. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be really good. Um, and, you know, just more stuff in the space is always a good thing. Gets people excited talking about it. People will use it. But um, I think 
you know, I don't think hand cash needs to solve that liquidity issue. That's why I mentioned the one address because then somebody else can. Um, and that, and you know, they already have the effective KYC with the phone number and stuff. So if, if they're worried about tracking, they can all, I mean, if hand cash is the off ramp is the only off ramp for USDC into the bank account, then I don't think they have to worry about AML or anything like that, especially if they control the amounts. So you just go let somebody else earn or whatever, or, you know, if someone builds and then uh, someone can build a bridge, right. From USDC to ETH USDC. And then if someone is actually using large amounts in some other pool in a different site, then they can convert themselves and they can eat the gas fee. Right. And they don't have to worry about it. And it's all tokenized on chain. So if hand cash needs to account for it, they just look at the ledger and say, oh, okay, that happened and just, you know, figure it out. Right. Um, which is the whole point of working on a public blockchain. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to say about this. Um, I, I, the announcements come in on the 24th. I believe that's the first day of the conference on some panel. So um, it sounds like this is not assumed based off what they're saying. There's actually going to be a product here. Um, so I'm, I think that'll be great. And I'm looking forward to using it. So let me know feedback and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.